Hi, welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai, and this is episode 68. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> Did you ever have one of those weeks where you felt like you had lots of things to do and the week was just slipping through your fingers like sand and you're like, no, trying to catch it? That was me this week. Uh, here it is, Thursday morning, very, very early, but I am finally getting to sit down and chat with you guys, and I meant to do it all week long, and ha! Ah, but we're here now. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you for joining me. I love this time together. So um, let's launch straight into the knitting talk, shall we? I know. You like it. I know. That's what you come for. <laughs> so first up is the what are you working on prize drawing. So that, I'm not doing that today, but I just want to remind you that this lovely skein of knitting in color is out, up, up for grabs. All you have to do is post in the thread entitled something about that what are you working on prize drawing the project that inspires you the most this month so really it's a thread for us to inspire each other get ideas to see because I can go on Ravelry and look at what everyone else is working on but that doesn't tell me what they're in love with what they can't put down that's what I want to hear about so post in there what you're working on that you're like oh just one more row oh I can't wait to get home from work so I can work on this and that will enter you in for a prize the drawing is going to be October 10th so there you go I do like to have one of those every month just so I can see what's going on because I know and you know what I'm working on but I like to see what you're working on what your number one thing is so um, we also have the baby blanket knit along going on right now that is through October 31st a little confusion on my part as to when it ends and so I also cast on a new baby blanket which I'll show you in a second but first let me tell you the knit along goes through the 31st get your finished object photos in there. Hopefully someone other than Avocado Sheep wins next time. <laughs> that is one lucky lady. Um, or she just knit a lot of baby blankets, right? And therefore deserves it. But um, yeah, so get your pictures in by the 31st. There's a chat thread if you want to feel inspired because I know baby blankets can be such a slog. So it's good for us to kind of push each other along. So to that end, I did cast on a new baby blanket this week. Um, Steve has two co-workers that are pregnant and due in January, and I have one. The one I ha this won't be for mine. Mine will get a hat. She's new to the company. But um, his, he's known for a while. So, uh, yeah. So here you go. So here are the colors, right? I showed you this before. These are Barocco Vintage, which is a 50-40-10 acrylic wool nylon based worsted weight yarn and who doesn't love it um it's just so forgiving and without the itch factor of wool so this is the square i cast on for the vivid which is by tin can knit i know everyone and their brother is knitting it and they're showing you completed squares well i'm just not that much in a rush i'm going to try and knit a square a week so you will see them in some form of progress as um, depending on what point in the week i record right so this colorway is 5197. I really love these jewel tones. Those are what speak to me, especially in the fall. This is perfect fall knitting, right? Um, and of course the teal was the first one I cast on. And wait till you see what else I did. <laughs> um, I am using US size 7's 4.5 millimeter needles. I really like the pattern so far. Um, it's written and charted and I didn't realize it was charted until I got to about this point and then I looked down further down the page and I went, oh, it started. I'd much rather work of charts. So I will be using that in the future. I'm going to sneeze. Mm. Okay, I'm not going to sneeze. There, you are safe. Anyway, so here you go. Here's my first half finished square. I know, it's not that exciting. Ah, I hear grumblings upstairs. Got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. So, punk socks. Those were the pink socks that I cast on last week. I know I'm kind of in a pink place, right? And if I held up my project bags, did I show you that last time? They're pretty much all pink. I don't, I don't know what's going on with the pink, but um, I'm not gonna be able to make it without sneezing. Oh, so 
uh, the punk socks. So the neural handshake socks, the um, into the no, the inspiration dye works socks that I knit with her fluffy pop plus base. I worked on those for what seemed like eternity. It was probably six or eight weeks, and the um, not anxiety, but the desire to just finish them that I felt when I finished those socks translated into working on these. And I ended up feeling like I had to hurry up and get these done. And these were pretty much my exclusive knitting for several days this week, which socks are purse knitting. They're not exclusive knitting projects for me, like in the evening and stuff. And at lunch at work. And uh, yeah, and so I banged these out in two weeks. I felt like they'd been on the needles forever. I don't know what was up to that. So these are uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Inspiration Dye Works. This is her basic sock. I knit it on US Zero's 2.0 millimeter needles. And if I were to knit these again, knit this base again, I need to go down a needle size. I didn't get a texture. I mean, the texture is fine, but the density isn't what I want. It's not. I, we'll see. I, I should hold my tongue on this and see how they wear. They might wear perfectly fine and be great. But I have a sense that I'm going to put them on and they're going to stretch out and I'm not going to, because the fabric isn't real rigid. And I'm just not going to be so happy with them. So, um, yeah. The basic sock is a 75-25 merino nylon. It's a great yarn. I'm using it for my, uh, for the blah. Knitting Samurai Plus One Knit Along for my uh, wristlets on that and our gauntlets and I really like it there. So something about this and those needles and maybe it was my gauge, my tension at that point trying to race. I don't know, but they didn't come out great. And I also have to tell you that I try to generally increase the stitches in through here, right? Because I do a toe up and uh, toe up with a gusset. So I increase stitches in through here and the stripes generally get smaller. I try to offset that by um, pulling in some a second strain of a strand of yarn. And I did fine with the first one. The second one, I'm trying to see where it is. I don't know where I was or what I was doing or what I was thinking about, but I really, really, really messed it up. Like it just does not look great. So these are gift socks now. <laughs> Because I won't be able to live with the fact that they look that different, number one. Like, they don't look the same. The, uh, I got the stripe sequence back here, but they're off here. And that just, it, it was, trust me, it was a big step that I just kept knitting. But the fact that I know it's there is going to bother me and I just won't wear them. So, I have a little someone that I know with, like, a great big punk stripe hug. So, I'm going to send these off to her. So... Those are off my needles, and when those came off, you know another pair of socks has to go on. It has to. I can't be without socks. So, let me show you. I thought it felt like there was a stitch marker in there. Uh, and there was. I can't just let it, let it go hide. Okay, wait. Uh, where's my... I have a pouch that is my notion. And if I don't put this stitch marker back in my little pouch, which is brimming over with highlighter tape, this is a small stitch marker container. This is a medium to a large stitch marker container. There we go. It's in there. It's safe. I also have my chibi. My lovely, lovely, dangerously sharp ginger scissors. Oh, my nose is right. All right. So, yeah. That's what was in there. Anyways, new socks, new socks. So I ordered some knit picks for Ligi. It was on sale. It was like three bucks a skein for the fingering weight. And it's just lovely. It's lovely to work with. Oh my God, I don't know how they get their yarn so soft. So this is the Felici in the jingle colorway. Yeah, I'm moving on to Christmas. I know it's kind of early, but here's my thought. You know how I have my 2013 goals? Christmas stockings was one of them. What if I knit this kind <laughs> instead of the, yeah, I know, I know, I'd just be cheating myself. But, um, so there are, hang on, I'm sorry, I need to do a new timer. Okay. The Jingle Socks. Um, this pattern is the Tri-Corner Cable Socks. It is by myself. 
Yes, I did design this quite a long time ago. Um, I need to change the page in Rav and make it a free pattern. So look for that in the coming weeks. I'm definitely not going to get to it this week. But, and I hesitated showing these to you because I wasn't going to have it up as a free pattern. But uh, I will. I'll fix it. So I knit these socks, I think in 2009, 8 or 9 for my mom. And they are, she was over here the other night and she pulled them out of her bag. They look so ratty. And... They're just covered in little pills and they're well-worn socks. It's very obvious when you look at them. Now she has three or four other pairs. And I looked at her, I said, mom, what's up with your socks? And she said, leave me alone, they're my favorite. Don't touch them, don't take them from me. <laughs> I was like, okay. I said, do you want me to knit you another pair? No, leave them alone, they're my favorite. Don't touch them, don't take them from me. Okay, I won't. <laughs> but really I went and cast on another pair. So I'm not sure if these are gonna be for her. I. She saw me, um, I think I had just started the toe and that, and we had that interaction and that's what made me think, I'll just turn these into those socks and um, either I'll give them to her or I won't. But I had thought this might look a little bit like a candy cane. It doesn't really. And I tend not to like the breaks and striped yarn on a pattern background because it really, it like messes with my mind. I'm like, what? Why did it stop? What? What? Break, break, break. And it's just visually unpleasing to me to my eye that's yeah I know I'm a little I'm a little uptight about that but anyway so those are the jingle socks and those are also knit on uh US 2's no US 0's 2.0 millimeter needles I can hear the sounds of my husband in the stairs and I think he's worried about coming to get coffee are you coming to get coffee maybe not maybe you want to pick upstairs okay um, I have to tell you that the Miss Winkle, well, she is lovely. She is in this bag. She is going to stay in this bag and be my travel project. It's going to go hibernate. I'm not really working on it, so, um, that's going to get set aside. I cast on a little sweater mojo. So, you know, I finished the SLMR. It's sitting right there. I'm going to wear it today. But <laughs> I was going to wear it for you guys, but I'm rushing, rush, rushing too much and I'm too warm to do that. But, um... So I finished that, I had open sweater needles and we made a trip to Western Massachusetts to go visit family for a birthday party. And on the way back from the birthday party, I said to Steve, Roland was taking a nap. It was way, it was like four o'clock. So we were way overdue for a nap. So he like got in the car and fell right asleep. And I said to Steve, okay, you're gonna drive. I'm just gonna close my eyes for a minute. And I put my seat back and he said, Steph, What's that on the garment? What's that dot? Do you think that's for webs? And I immediately sat bolt upright and I looked at the garment because I have programmed in all the yarn shops within 300 miles of me into the garment. I did this, I keep upgrading garments and moving that data so it keeps going. So, <laughs> so I did this like, I want to say 2009, that's probably when I got my first garment. And I was like, yes, that's that's webs. And oh my God, look, we're gonna drive right by it on the way back to your aunt and uncle's house. <gasps> Quick, text everybody, tell them we're gonna be late. You stay in the car with Roland while he sleeps. And they sat in the parking lot for a good hour while I ran around the store and bought a few things. I was pretty reserved for me. Um, I did, and I went to the warehouse part and went through there and I came out with a great deal on a sweater's worth of yarn. I'll tell you when I start knitting with it. Um, nothing I've ever heard of just a really pretty blue tweed color so I got that and then I circled the front I kid you not no less than like five times past this yard I kept looking for a substitute that was less expensive and finally I just said stop it this is what you want just buy it and the thing with it is is this is Madeline Tosh I have a sweater's worth of Madeline Tosh I can't bring myself to knit with it it is too pretty to knit with. And so I was like, okay, I have empty needles right now. If I buy a sweater's worth of this gorgeous Dr. Zhivago Sky colorway, I have to cast it on right away. Like I'll sit at his aunt and uncle's tonight and I will skein up the yarn, like hand wind it, and I will cast it on immediately. And <clears throat> I, I did this hand skeining part, but then I got, of course, the stage fright again, and I couldn't cast on because it, I, ah, what to do, what to do. And I think I ended up wanting to do a vodka gimlet or the one from Yzolda's Tea, Yzolda Tea's Big Red in the City. Laurel, I think is the one. I printed both of them out. I looked at them. I was all ready to go. And then I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> 
it. So that's sitting all caked up waiting for me, being gorgeous, gorgeous colorway. Oh my God. And they had at Webb's, they had a whole giant wall of it, probably six feet wide by, I don't know, three feet high, that section of it. And there were like five different shades of gray and they had more in the back. And so I had like my choice because I do wear a lot of gray sweaters, but I do not knit gray sweaters. So, well, except for this Silomar. And this is just such a different gray. So look for this, Mad Tosh DK. Yep, I did it, I know. So in the meantime, what I did cast on because I wasn't feeling intimidated and I realized that uh, Christmas pictures, Thanksgiving and Rhinebeck, so he wears the same sweater to all three events, <laughs> was coming and I have not knit Roland a sweater this year. I, I talk about it, but I could not push myself to do it. I know, and you know what I just realized? I don't even have an image to show you. Oh, and I have nothing down here. Mm, this is the problem with keeping your patterns on your good radar, on your iPad, but you'll just have to trust me that it's a really cute sweater. So I cast on, and it is flying. This is the Abernathy by Terry Krause. I am using, Barocco Vintage because um, the last sweater I knit him was a majority wool yarn and he was just too itchy. He didn't want it touching his neck. So this is a shawl collared, I'm going to tell you, picture this with me, shawl collar, cables down the front, a little button right here, or toggle, um, and then ribbing down the front of the sleeve sweater for a little boy. It's so adorable in the picture. Um, it's knit in a nice gray color. It would have been gorgeous in this, but no. <laughs> so here is what I have so far. Yay! And it was flying along like Sunday. I cast on Sunday, I think, and it got to about here. Like I had split off the sleeves and was just going to town on this thing. So I need to knit about another two inches on the body and then I go into the ribbing section. Um, I did change the center cable. So the one that was there, it was the same thing as the, um, yeah, my brain was just breaking. I would look at it and the cables did not go the way I thought they should go, like the way I expected them to flow. And so my brain was just like that, again, that like hiccup, like what's happening? What? No. What? as I'd look down the front of it. So I was like, no, I won't like that. So I inserted the, what's the name of this key? Uh, all I said was that I, re I changed it. It is the cable arrow. And I got that out of my Harmony Stitch Guide books. So yeah, just over eight stitches right there. So, and these are according to pattern, I kept those. So, and it does have this really cool rib detail on the sleeves, which I didn't even see until I started knitting it. And it was like, oh, and work the stripe section here. And it was like, what are you talking about? But yeah, so, so far so good. I am knitting the two year size, but my gauge is off. So it's coming out closer to the three year size. I measured his chest. <laughs> I measured my chest, told him how much fun it was. Then measured his chest. This is Mac. Mac, are your eyes clean? They're not too bad. So anyways, <clears throat> there you go. There's Roland's sweater. I really like the gauge that I'm getting on this too. These are US size 7s, 4.5 millimeter needles. I think my jacquemore that I knit for myself was knit on eighth and it's much more drapey. This is a firmer fabric. So hoping, hoping it won't be too itchy. And if you're gonna be at Rhinebeck, you will see the little man running around in the sweater, assuming it's cool. Enough. So there you go. And hopefully he won't be running around. <sighs> hopefully we can keep him under in a handhold or on a backpack. We'll see. You reading about choo choos? Yeah. You want to read to me about choo choos or airplanes? Yeah. What would Cookie Monster say? Uh oh. What's uh oh? Choo choo. Choo choo. Choo choo. Oh no! He took the choo choo to bed with him, didn't he? Yeah. Sometimes broke. you do that, right? I broke. It's not broke. Mm -hmm. It's okay. He can put it back when he's done. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see how we do. So, isn't that exciting? A new sweater. Lastly, well, no, not lastly, the Byzantine Mitts by Rue, by La Maison Relie. 
these are <clears throat> I haven't seen you in so long oh my god I have so much to tell you about this oh my god oh my god okay here we go so these are for the Knitting Samurai Plus One knit along that we're doing over in the group. Thank you so much to everyone who is speeding along through their socks and fingerless mitts. And uh, there's the beautiful cowl out there. I think it's the willow cowl. I love it. I love it. I love it. And if you have the yarn and have not joined in, don't feel like you're behind. You have until the end of October. You have plenty of time to cast on and finish something. So here is my first one. I know. Does it not scream super loud at you? Um, <clears throat> Let's see. This is the yarn is our special knitting samurai plus so those one yarn, are which was my Byzantine mitts. I did cast on for the second one, and I am about that far into it. These need to go back into the purse and be the purse. Now. But I did want to tell you that I bought a pair of carbon needles in this size while I was at Webs to try them out. I've heard everybody talk about them. Not a fan. They are a little too sticky for me. Like the tips are great, the fact that they're metal, but um. They're nice and sharp tips, but the yarn just stuck a little too much on the the needle tips for me to to really enjoy working with them. I'm a, a Addy Turbo, well, not really Addy Turbo, but I am a metal needle girl. That's what I like. So that's that. The last project um, that's sort of hibernating right now is the boot cuff. So I haven't touched that, so you might not see that again, but I did want to just mention it. Give you one, one more peek at it because it is lovely with the cake yarn, cake walk yarn, on um, 2.5 millimeter, 2.5 US, 3.0 millimeter needles, and this is the stash yarn. And God, don't, ah, oh, I'm saying God a lot. I'm sorry. Please don't be offended. <laughs> um, it's just lovely. It's so squishy and gorgeous. So that's stash, which is an 80 10 10. Okay, wool. Well, cashmere nylon yarn so of course it's going to be squishy and gorgeous and then that is well no i have one more thing to show you and then we'll do the last thing. oh my god so many things in the air and we're juggling and we're juggling and i did an order from leading man fiber arts da, da, da. i love their color scents oh my god so this is their showstopper which is their fingering weight base 7525 merino nylon is that not gorgeous this is called man of mystery i love this color right but here's the one that i really love and it was kind of a, a i was crazy I was, let's just say that like i couldn't really tell from the picture it was what color this was i knew it was dark but i couldn't see all the depth of color and the beauty behind it this is called industrial on the dramatig turg dramaturg color on base <laughs> I ordered this and then proceeded to say, Stephen, make me a sweater's worth. So I have a sweater's worth in the mail coming of this as well. And that is 100% super wash, 250 grams, very generous yardage for the price. Um, and this is just this gorgeous, rich blue, black. There are so many colors underneath here, but overall your eye reads it as well. I think it will make an amazing sweater. So I can't wait. So I did want to show you that. And then, okay, there, that's, that's new, that's what's going on, you are now fully caught up, you may proceed. <laughs> but there's one more thing I want to talk about, my 2013 goals update! Ba -ba -ba -ba. I feel like we should have shining lights and like, I don't know, things going on. self-striping sock yarns I have completed 10 out of 13 pairs and it's October oh yeah I have to do three more that sounds like a lot but I do yeah yeah October November December pairs so I have to do three more pairs and then I'll be done ha! so in case you were curious the pairs are my 716 that went to Cora's us the schools in session uh, no 716 was for my cousin schools in session went to a viewer uh, the red pair that I knit, red and gray, moral, the pair for my grandmother, 
the pair of goth stripe socks oh i have to find those and wear those the pair for steve's grandmother the pair of caution bruin socks that i knit those are yellow and black they're very bright during the playoffs the graduation socks that i finished for my cousin but have not given her <laughs> i've got all these christmas socks down the neural handshake and then lastly the punk stripe socks so woohoo i i have to celebrate that one because i think that's the only goal i'm gonna make but you know 13 patterns from books. Really, there's no reason why I'm not further along than four out of 13, but that's where I am. I'm falling behind there. One baby vest, two, no, one vest for my dad, two baby blankets, three Christmas stockings. Okay, so can we just sub in four baby blankets and call that even? I did look at patterns when I was like, ah, no sweaters are inspiring me right now. I did look at patterns for Christmas stockings. I think I found one I like. But then I got torn on do I make it crazy bright colorful the way I would like or do I make it tasteful that I would want to hang up every year. So I'm stuck. I'll figure that out. Um, 13 sweaters. Okay, so I have four done. That's great, right? The Dark and Stormy, the Harvest Moon, the Jackaroo, and the Asilomar. I now have the Abernathy on the needles for Roland. Kids sweaters count. Trust me, they do. So I'm, I might get six. If I can get six, I'll be happy with that. And then the 13 oldest yarns, still only that one baby blanket knit out of um, that older cotton yarn that I had. So there you go. It's a mixed bag. A mixed bag. It's mostly falling short. But you know what? I like goals. They keep me organized. They give me some place to look to and something to aim for. So that's the show for this time around. I will see you again in about 10 days or so. I hope you're having a great time enjoying the fall weather. Oh, it's glorious. Take care. Love you.